Okay, we're good to go. Should we start? I will take about about an hour, if, is, except for all uh, everybody else is here for about an hour. Yeah. Uh, I think we should introduce ourselves mm -hmm. uh, again, maybe, perhaps, because this is um, with some new faces. Um, I'm Simon, the Educational Technologist, and clockwise. Um, hi, my name is Daru, and I'm the Bahasa Indonesia teacher. teacher. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Loli, and I'm teacher's planet. I love the Russian language. I'm Nina, I teach Swedish. Hello, Pascal, I teach French. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, this, this is my first year so here at Columbia. So I do part time here and part time at the University of Sweden. So. Mm -hmm. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, this is. Everybody's here for podcasting. Uh, this would be the first part of a podcasting mini-series. That's a, that's a term that's very much in vogue these days. Um, the second one will be obviously next week, uh, where we will look into the sort of nitty-gritty of sound editing, well, basics maybe, let's say, about sound editing, uh, cutting, pasting, cleaning things up, and so on and so forth. And then following that next week, uh, we will then see how we can actually upload it to the web. Um, we will look into different podcast services, how to uh, make a cover for your podcast, and how to subscribe to it, or how to tell your students how to uh, subscribe to it. We will touch on that a little bit today, uh, but not to a great extent. What today is going to be about is essentially the theory behind podcasts, if you will, if we can even talk about theory behind podcasts, um, about its pedagogical applications. Uh, we will talk about how it sort of lines up with or resonates with certain concepts in language didactics and language pedagogy. And by we, I mean um, allowing you to discuss it and see, based on your experiences, uh, how you can sort of fit podcasts into the broader SLA context, okay? Um, but to begin, I would like you to I would like you to, uh, to to listen to, to listen to a podcast. I have deliberately chosen Icelandic, thinking that nobody would know it. Nina, do you know Icelandic? Oh no. Okay, perfect. Then fantastic. Uh, this is ancient. <laughs> yes, uh, it's a one-minute podcast that is actually two minutes long. Um, it's in English and Icelandic. I would like you guys to give it a listen and then try to pay attention to not just what is being taught, but also how it's being taught, how it breaks down, what methods are being used, and so on and so forth. Okay, so look at it from the point of view of an instructor to see whether this is something that, as an Icelandic instructor, you may want to use in class. Repeat this again after Austin. Yao. One more time. 
Yeah. Good. Uh, what word goes with yes? No, of course. And in Icelandic, this couldn't be more simple. The word for no is? Nay. Listen again and repeat after Austin. Nay. Okay, it's always good to be polite and to create a good impression. Austin, can you teach us the Icelandic word for thank you? Yes, in Icelandic, thank you is tak. Listen again. Tak. One more time. Tak. If you say tak to someone, then you may hear this phrase in return. Gjörðu svo vel. It means something like you're welcome. Listen again. Gjörðu svo vel. One more time. Gjörðu svo vel. Excellent. That's almost us for this show. Before we finish, however, there's one other word we're going to mention, and that's the word for and. In Icelandic, and is? Og. So now we can say thank you and bye-bye. Tak or bless bless. You have been listening to a production of the Coffee Breaker. And so on and so forth. You guys have an idea by now, I hope. And next week you'll need to quiz us to see whether we remember Next what? <laughs> next week you'll need to quiz us to see whether we remember anything. No, 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 there will be no quizzes. This is stressful enough already. Um, So what is a podcast? It's a program, an online program with audio. Mm-hmm. Mini audio class. Mm-hmm. Okay, mini, short. Very mini, short. Very mini. How long? One minute. One minute? Okay. It can be longer, right? It can, it can be longer. Can be longer. Like How long minutes, can it be? 30 minutes. An hour? 30 minutes. Uh, an hour? Okay. Should it be an hour, though, for classes? No, probably not. Well, Probably it, not. What's the attention span of our students? Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes. Are your very ambitious ones. <laughs> what about? Ten. Seven. That depends for what. Attention for what. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for attention a, for four it will be very short. Mm-hmm. So the five minutes structure it. Five seven minutes. Mm-hmm. One minute podcasts are probably a good idea. Two minutes to five to seven, depending on what. I would not make it longer than five minutes. But you know, it depends what we want to do with them. Um, what is what is a language podcast? And we kind of started talking about it. So it's, it's a broadcast, right? It's a broadcast that we can download from the internet. It's it's a targeted sort of chunk uh, of audio material. What else? Some kind of interaction. Mm-hmm. Interaction. Okay. Between can you tell us more? Two people. Two people. So dialogue. So communication. Some I'll let you agree. I can. The communication between who, who and who, just the one, the, the the voice on the podcast and the audience or the people in the podcast. So there was communication between the people in the podcast as a sample to illustrate it to the audience, but there was no communication between the audience and the podcast. So we're being asked to repeat. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For learning vocabulary, just for words. So yeah. I think that the interview thing is just a way of decoration yes. because it, it, it makes it more pleasant, more natural. Mm-hmm. It's less boring than just having one person present one thing. It's, it sounds like oh, well, it's obviously not a real dialogue, but I mean it feels more like one. Um, but I mean we have grammar podcasts on, on, on. I mean usually without books. Most of the time there's only one person, I don't know if it's, <laughs> it's cheaper. <laughs> That's the only, the only type of a podcast that I think we will mm-hmm. not have, uh, have experience in. Some of our textbooks, Russian textbooks, mm-hmm. they have podcasts, grammar podcasts. Mm-hmm. And they think that it is better for students. But in most cases, students just ignore them. And we don't recommend them because it's as boring as reading the textbook. Some people, I guess some people respond better to it this thing, or they like having the choice of having both. Yes. Uh, sometimes the pronunciations, it's an added bonus. 
But often it doesn't really add much. That's what, that would be ways of adding both. Mm -hmm. And it will be not very good podcasting because this is a not very effective use of the podcast. So hopefully we can learn some other uses. <laughs> sure. Um, we will. I don't know if today is necessarily the day when we will actually go into the uses of the podcast, um, but we can definitely start discussing them. Alessandra, what is a language podcast? It's already... What do you think? Something recorded. Uh, mm -hmm. can be something that the students listen to, or mm -hmm. maybe the students can create the podcast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or something. So you assume that something that is uh, so that there, there are a couple threads that go throughout the discussion right now. There's something that recorded, of course, something the students can listen to, something that uh, portrays an interaction between the students, something that could also simulate interaction between the maker of the podcast, that is teacher, and the broadcast, right, and the audience. Is although there are comments, problems with it. Or, so it's something that can be inserted in a, in a blog or something that mm -hmm. there's an interaction between the students, mm -hmm. and the owner of the podcast, and the other students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Can I ask a question? I mean, yes. if there is any type of image that's not a podcast, or is it? Can you call this a podcast? And if somebody is showing like uh, <coughs> conjugation <laughs> tables or um, some kind of visual, you mean a, a little tiny bit of broadcast with the video? Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, and uh, I people call it. A, Video podcasts, or that they're trying to make this a thing. Podcast. <laughs> yeah, with a C, not with a K. It's a podcast. Um, okay, so um, and we already started talking about what this thing could be used for, right? So modeling pronunciation uh, is is one thing for sure. Uh, what other ideas do we have? Okay, pronunciation is obviously, and phonetic is obviously the first kind of major intuitive uh, use. Some content. Some content. What kind? Culture. Culture. Okay. Uh, Pascal, how would you use it for culture? Or how? Um, well, very basic thing, you know, how to say vu and chi and you know, polite and informal. Mm -hmm. Okay, so cultural mode of pragmatics. Mm -hmm. I really have anything to add. So I have the same thought with Pascal that like oh. how to say happy birthday in your own language or how to talk to the older, how to talk to the younger in some specific culture we have different words mm -hmm. or different um, uh, pronouns for example, how you say hi to the older, how you say hi to the younger person. Different types of meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm just confused a little bit. Are we talking what podcast can be on right now? Are we discussing what can be the content of the podcast? Yes. The topics. Okay. Yes. Um, so right now we're sort of trying to um, dis construct a okay. definition of a podcast the way we understand it, and anything that sort of connects to it and goes away from it. In terms of the form and in terms of the content. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can be used for everything, no character, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, principle, dogmatics. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what? Oh, yeah, typical mistakes that we make. You know what? A section of a. Do you know what? <laughs> so, and, and we will we'll sort out these ideas uh, in a bit. Uh, thinking of the podcast that you just heard, what could it be comprised of? In terms of how would you structure it? What we listened to is just an example of a podcast. Um, you can use you can, you can maybe use that to uh, think about how else we can put a uh, podcast together. One that is deductively useful and sound. You mean what can we hear from a podcast rather than human sounds? Mm, I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of the structure. How it was constructed. Yeah, how would you, how would you... Introduction, 
main ideas of the four words that we listen to the mm -hmm. study. Okay. And like a conclusion, not like, and here is another podcast about blah, blah, blah. We will learn more the next day. But it's a, it's, it sounds to me like a variation of the, you know, learn one word per day type thing, but it's like in one minute you're going to learn four words actually. And so it's really bite size, it's super short. Um, and so in that, in that sense, it's probably efficient because you, your attention is really focused. One thing that was almost like a joke, and you know, if you start with these very, very simple words, and yeah, oh, okay, I can manage that, hey, that's fine, type is great. And then you're welcome, he's like, <laughs> what? So I don't know whether they intended it to be like almost a joke. <laughs> of course they know that nobody is going to be able to guess it as easily. And yet you are only asked to repeat it like twice. Whereas it is a problem. I mean, we should definitely stop and decompose, I mean, sort of decompose it into its, its different sounds. But that's also come up. Like whenever you use podcasts, you probably would have to have another um, source, like a written source, so yes. students can say it sure. instead of just imitating um, the native speaker. But you don't know what they do afterwards. At the moment, it's just to hook you and just to show you that it's actually doable, and you can actually learn a few words of that. But this, your welcome type thing was like, what? Hello? I was thinking, the question is, what is it comprised of? And then thinking about the structure, totally not what you were talking about, but the structure was the introduction of the participants, who did it. then they uh, it introduced the topic, and then they introduced the words, and they practiced these words with the audience, and there were pauses, and so there was kind of an interrupt kind of there was an interaction between the two participants so that made it like we are and that's just could be assigned to students before they come to the first class on the first time of a language just to and then in class you can already ask them just yes or no yes or no something like that but the structure was clear the structure of the podcast was clear mm -hmm. very, 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 very basic very these four words Mm -hmm. And the choice of four words was, uh, I wouldn't say that yes, and that that was the simplest of words, I guess. But there was something about you know, about being polite, and I right away was no polite. So this, this is kind of, but I understand why they chose. Well, it's the right, it's an introductory second lesson, yes. you know, they only have two minutes to do it because they're going to limit it to four or five words, and that stays within the parameter that we decided that would be probably most productive for a podcast. And this is clearly for vocabulary, there's a pragmatical aspect, pragmatics aspect to it, um, but mostly vocabulary focus, and the structure is pretty sensible, I think. Um, were there any problems with the structure of this particular podcast? That podcast, the yes, no, thank you, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. The one that you just listened to. Well, the you're welcome is actually a little bit shocking. <laughs> yeah, because, okay, I got Yao name, mm -hmm. and then suddenly uh, uh, you're at the top. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there's no context at all. So this decontextualized, yeah. right? You already said that there, we don't know what's going to happen before, what's going to happen yeah. after it. There, there's no follow up yes. on it. It is the difficulty level is not uniform. We have okay, talk. Mm -hmm. Less, less, and, the <laughs> and then is, back to monosyllabic. Or is it probably like I can I could see that you have like more than ten lists. Maybe it's like the words list, and then later from mm -hmm. eleven to fifteen, probably you have the context, <coughs> like how to say good morning. Yeah. Like, well, very well, but those are just presumptions. Those are your presuppositions, yeah. right? Yeah. There's, there's nowhere. Okay, yeah. that, that that is explained. Mm -hmm. At oh, the end, what? there's a little tiny attempt, you know, at a context because mm -hmm. you have context because you are saying goodbye, so you say. Um, thank you and goodbye. So that's the context is right. It's mm -hmm. the context of the podcast that provides the actual authentic situation. But it only comes at the end. Mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't say hello. Well, they taught it before and they gave it one minute. So I guess they really could have done it. Well, I understand. They, 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 they could reach out because you know, it was introduced before. So they said, oh, hello, in you know, Sunday. As you recall, it's hello. And then, So you have the dimension of your authentic context present, obviously, since we have a native speaker, or you know, or however it is um, exemplified in this particular broadcast. 
Um, in terms of authenticity, is this, uh, would you um, agree that this particular podcast is something that would be culturally relevant to the learner? It is relevant, not for that one. If you were a well, learner or a you know a student in of Icelandic somewhere, would you find this particular culturally relevant? Um, in a very broad sense, because you know it's a culture where people say thank you <laughs> and yeah. you're welcome, but it's no, not special, not particularly. Yeah, do you have any? No, I, I don't think so. It's just taking completely out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you don't see them in context. Mm-hmm. The problem is, so, we, so this goes back to one of the issues that we have within it is having to decontextualize, right? So we don't know whether it's going to be, it's going to be culturally relevant or not. We do know that this is a, that it is authentic. Now, is this something that's going to be meaningful? I mean, you know that when you know when somebody says thank you, the other person is going to say you're welcome. Uh, so it's, it's a code. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know how to interact socially and the like. But that's the meaning is is really restricted to that. Oh, but uh, I. Yeah. That's the very first, I mean, just the very first introduction to the to the language, the first minute of the first class, or the first day. So okay, yes, now they're kind of trying to attract people. I'm not sure that they what will attract uh, people. Uh, you're not sure they will attract. Uh, I'm not <laughs> sure, but okay, so that they can say <coughs> something. But in terms of cultural and meaningful, how culturally meaningful are words? Yes, no. Hello and goodbye and thank you. They are. Mm-hmm. We need to know whether we need to contextualize these particular words. I don't think so because I assume that in okay, if we're talking about European cultures, that will be the same context for all, at least for these particular words. Okay, so we are already getting into, um, or we are using some of the notions that we know from SLA to critique. This particular podcast, of course, this is just one out of the you know, series of many. We don't have uh, the context. We don't know what the instructor is going to do with it. Uh, we don't know how it's going to be positioned in the curriculum. Um, how, which is why, whereas this is definitely something that's authentic, we don't know it's culturally relevant. We don't know it's meaningful. Do you, Alessandro, do you have any maybe suggestions to how this particular podcast that we listen to actually? You know, you're not a good person to ask this question because you're not here. But maybe Daru. Uh, do you have any particular any suggestions to why, how we could make this podcast culturally relevant and or meaningful? Well, I'm not really sure. Probably again, I have a, this pre-assumption just because I saw a long list. Mm-hmm. So I thought, well, that is actually just useful to so the student can understand what's the meaning of yes, no. Maybe mm-hmm. the podcast that comes after that, we can apply that yes, no, thank you in a longer conversation, mm-hmm. like go to the market, shopping in Iceland, in Iceland and then saying yes, thank you in the context of we are at the market. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Any other comments, thoughts? Was this comprehensible? In my opinion, I don't think it was c- comprehensible at all, or at least for a person who, um, and there's no there's no grounds for this to have been comprehensible in and of itself, since there are no additional materials that are provided with it. Um, again, in order to make it comprehensible, it would have to be scaffolded, it would have to be weaved into some sort of a structure that prepares students or gives them the relevant background, prepares them for uh, what is coming, and then models, uh, in this case, the, pron- the pronunciation. 
Um, now, when it comes to um, comprehensible um, input, do I mean I think it's pretty obvious that podcasts do offer space for uh, the presence of this kind of input. Um, do you think that? How would you, maybe a different way, um, how would you um, apply comprehensible input? Or how would you maybe include podcasts that provide comprehensible input in your own curriculum if you have not already done so, or if you have already done so? Um, you need the podcast to present material because students are already know and then you add a couple of things mm -hmm. in a clear context. That become comprehensible, mm -hmm. right? so they can start with hello because they've taught it before, hello, how are you, or hello, hello, <coughs> uh, my name is, and then uh, something you know, to introduce yes or no, you need a question, and you need the question to be comprehensible, otherwise it's not going to work, I mean, uh, you, you need a, a foundation, so either you use cognates, also depends on your target audience, I mean, mm -hmm. Yao didn't really surprise us, Nay didn't surprise us, Bob didn't surprise us if you know you speak Swedish. <laughs> um, Tak doesn't surprise me either, but the rest, yeah. You know, so I, and I don't know, maybe if you don't know any any northern language, it's all going to be totally mm -hmm. opaque. So. Yeah, that would be difficult. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Or you could supply. You could use English, I mean, to, to supply the context. Mm -hmm. um, the reason why I chose this particular podcast and I took, and I, I chose it to just completely, you know, to play completely out of the context is because, uh, specifically, precisely, to uh, sort of solicit these kinds of ideas and thoughts, and maybe even, uh, or putting even more so, the critique uh, of, or the danger, maybe, of having a podcast that is decontextualized and having a podcast that's completely in a vacuum, kind of, you know, just present there. Because as, uh, as you pointed out, uh, I think that is part of the reason why students don't necessarily want to listen to podcasts. I mean, they are boring, and more often than not, they, you know, come sort of divorced uh, from the, what, uh, from, you know, what the other things that are happening in the classroom. Perhaps this particular content is not good for a podcast. Or if there, there might be a piece too. Content will be immediately contextualized even in, in a video mm -hmm. responding when it's by body language it, it will be clear right mm -hmm. because the, the what's the point of this podcast so maybe the choice of the content is not very mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. so then the question my question is when do we use podcasts what are they good for mm -hmm. and one of the the only the, that's why I just I've come here. I, I thought I would uh, learn some more um, in what, where else this podcast can be used uh, besides what uh, at least I already know that is a mostly grammar kind of instead of reading, students can listen to podcasts mm -hmm. and and a, an addition to grammar and. So that's a flip flop from instead of explain me explaining or the instructor explaining it to in the classroom, mm -hmm. the student listen to it at home and then just practice it in the classroom. But well, that's what where we're talking about the listening, pronunciation, so I don't know cultural things. There might might be cultural introductions, but again, everything cultural I think is works much better perhaps I don't you know perhaps which one works much better with a video rather than just an audio mm -hmm. so what are the what are the uses of podcasts out there are there very successful cheaper. experiences huh? they probably cheaper I have an idea to, to use them to use the video Something. but again it's, it's just what is it, what is the purpose what does it serve uh, why it is more effective than we already have. That's what, for any... You hear it, when you're at home after the class, 
you have the book or you learn the new vocabulary and you are like, oh, how do I pronounce these words, especially this difficult one. Okay. So to listen it again as a second, in a second time or as a second time, it's not the first, it's an isolated material. I would use it as a comfort. This is a new technology for what used to be on the tape. Um, Yes, uh, although it does come with a certain set of features that were absent from the okay. you know, analog mm -hmm. distribution. But it is, um, I was going to get to that part of the workshop actually about right now, uh, now that we're talking about it. And um, what, in order to maybe help us talk about how this, uh, this technology could be used effectively in classroom, now I am not sure if this is, uh, if the right way to think of it is as a modality that could be used to replace something else. Um, in uh, the, the papers that I read, uh, it has always been used as a supplement to something. Uh, it is not a replacement. In that sense, I think podcasts do play a role and there is space for them in the curriculum. Um, on the handout that uh, somebody do you have? No. So if you take a look at a handout, um, I went through a bunch of articles and sort of summarized uh, the findings, and um, I roughly divided them, and they're all positive impacts, uh, and I roughly divided them into two different categories. Uh, that, uh, the, the impacts that relate to second language acquisition, and then the second category would be the effects on learners' perceptions and, and attitudes. Um, so, Rather than coming up with uh, today with ways or specific ideas and sort of you know imposing how these things could be applied, I wanted to go over this uh, or offer this bullet list uh, to you and see if, this, if there's anything here that we could maybe work together and come up with by way of how uh, these podcasts could be implemented in class. Okay, do you need a minute to familiarize yourself with the? Uh, What we just saw, I mean, mm -hmm. probably we didn't tick all these boxes. Oh my god, we just listened to. Um, so, would you, what would a really efficient podcast be? Uh, a dialogue, like conversations, uh, an explanation of grammar, um, uh, a conversation about language? Um, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think that there's one answer to this question. I think there's just like a one, you know, efficient podcast that, uh, is, that will fit every single demand that is uh, your one has an instructor. Uh, I think that uh, just like I'll, you know, depending on what you want to do, uh, you will sure. use different approaches and you structure these things differently. Uh, so the first um, idea that we have is uh, what you might know that of course this is something that is used to improve pronunciation and uh, research has shown that working with these things is effective. Um, but when the podcast yeah. address the pronunciation? certain words or certain sounds? 
directly um, or just because you listen to authentic language? Because if it's listening to authentic language, you can use millions of different That's materials. what I was going to say. So my question still is the same. Mm -hmm. How is podcast different from any <coughs> audio or other audio or thing that we listen to? Anything that we listen to, students listen to, learn to sure. listen to, uh, improves helps to improve pronunciation mm -hmm. and helps to improve listening comprehension. Mm -hmm. So as a podcast, because this is an audio, so it should do this, uh, do the, does this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that I just wrote all this implicit, explicit, grammar structures, mm -hmm. useful and practicing listening strategies. This is, listening strategy is good, but uh, students need to know about listening strategies, how to apply them. That's, mm -hmm. again, the instructors, mm -hmm. yeah, the instructors, so we, mm -hmm. we give them instructions how to listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. That's how we work on listening, uh, listening comprehension strategies, mm -hmm. not necessarily with podcasts, but with anything else. Sure. So, and if we talk about uh, implicit and explicit grammar, it depends on the content of the podcast. So again, podcast in its own, I still don't understand uh, what's the value of podcasts in comparison with anything else, any other technologies that develop listening. That For the same range. So I think, I think, so in comparison to, let's say, a CD, right, or a tape, uh, why, why this thing? Uh, why should we, and by the way, should we, why should we even care? I think part of the answer for that lies in the um, in the ease of use and in the um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, the the fact that students are used to the interface of the podcast. Um, it is a massively popular medium that um, actually I mean. It could be an audio lecture on anything. We get on pronunciation, mm -hmm. on vocabulary, on grammar, on culture. Mm -hmm. So, so I, th I think your question is why this, not necessarily about why this particular modality. Like, what is it about the podcast itself rather than the new technology? Mm -hmm. a, a new modern today's technology that students are used to. That's, mm -hmm. that's per That's perfect. Mm -hmm. That's perfect, but my question is, is there anything different in terms of uh, pedagogy, methodology, anything that it offers? Um, I cannot really answer when it comes to the pedagogy and things, but I work with people in Indonesia that who, who actually have this lots and lots of recording, but the problem is that probably they, they haven't uploaded it yet in the podcast. So basically, um, I think when it comes to the question, what podcasts are for? It's because this is a supplement. This is something that is, in my opinion, more flexible. So let's say we have a book. This unit we're talking about shopping at the market again, for example. And then you come up with an idea. Okay, right. The recording that I have in this book is not really putting the pressure on the pronunciation of money, for example. So I'm going to make a new podcast with another person having a conversation and things like that. As a, as a supplement to, um, let's say, to uh, drill the student's pronunciation on this specific word. Um, that's what I get from what is the purpose of having this podcast. So It's the easiness of using It's the use. I would, I would argue it's also the ubiquity of it. Um, it podcasts are everywhere. Um, more and more people are listening to it. And I do have a bunch can of can create many here. different podcasts. Uh, that, that would be right, that would be this or the other side of the coin. Um, it is something that your students can, uh, I mean, everybody uses cell phones these days, everybody uses mobile computing, mobile devices, is something that they can keep literally in their pockets, right? Um, rather than, you know, relying on a DVD sort of tape. Because the, mechan the, the, the pedagogical behind, the mechanics behind it is very, very similar. Um, the one additional convenience that is with podcasts is the way that comes with podcasts is the way you can manipulate the audio, uh, which is with greater precision than you can do it with analog modes, um, which is helpful. And uh, again, research shows that, um, and I agree with you, like in four of the articles too, um, and research shows that it's actually something that is appreciated, that increases motivation, that has tangible effects when it comes to understanding. Um, I would say that um, the one, Perhaps maybe the biggest benefit of using podcasts is doesn't come from the perspective of a teacher or the instructor, but of a student. 
uh, this is a kind of medium that is really easy to produce and really easy to make, really easy to upload and to make available to everybody else to share. Uh, so in that sense, perhaps rather than, you know, would be um, a much um, sort of convenient <coughs> vessel uh, to convey language uh, than, you know, tape or a video or, I don't know, a scene. Yeah, yeah. It's nimble. I mean, right, exactly. And also, I think, it can be easy to personalize the podcast or mm -hmm. to make them especially about the small point. So you can address all sorts of little things with the podcast. And this goes back to the first point, right? That the ideal length of the podcast is not an hour. Yeah. It's not half an hour, but it's you know five, seven minutes because this it, it is it is a medium that is made for at least in the context of language instruction for bite size sort of you know information. The only podcast on the grammar, on the political podcast, yeah. is when you have people mm -hmm. talk, yeah, five minutes of that for a conversation. But um, I'm, I'm really yeah. happy that you're actually here and you're, you're, you're challenging all these yeah. things. Um, one thing that, um, one of the main reasons why I wanted to uh, sort of rehash uh, this, this topic of podcast um, is because of these statistics that I ran into and because of the fact that this is only going to grow. So what are the topics? Because again, I'm really aware of very tiny the topics slice of you know, for podcasts. You know, it's anything, anything, and everything. They, they, it's uh, yeah. Uh, we can, I can, I can show you after the, uh, after the workshop. There's anything you want to listen so about. Can you show it during the workshop? Sure. Um, it's not particularly related to. Uh, so it's like a tweet, but a bit longer. The longer, and more, longer tweet. And, and you listen, and you listen to, yeah. to listen to someone talking about something. Yeah, talking um, about yeah it could be. Well, it's right. It's so going to be. So people subscribe to. Because yes, to listen to more. It's like a TV show, but just the audio. I think I can see. Yeah, that's the one with Valley. Lexington Valley. Lexicon Valley. Yes. Mm -hmm. Great podcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great podcast. Such a thing, awesome. such fun to listen mm -hmm. to your yeah. yeah. linguist. Yeah. Lexicon Valley, yes. Yep. Um in the okay, well, they going are longer there. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, no, go on, no, this, is, this is your workshop over here. Yeah. <laughs> they much longer. That's talking about how long should yeah. a, mm -hmm. a a because what podcast. I listen to is on the radio. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I do it depends, depends on the topic. It's like a mini, mini broadcast. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it depends on the purpose and the on the purpose mm -hmm. of the podcast. So these are all about 40, 50 minutes long. Um, so, yeah. as you see, there's a list of different episodes, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, again, the difference mm -hmm. between uh, a sort of more standard medium of uh, sound or, or, or audio um, exchange uh, if, and, and a podcast is that these are, um, you can subscribe to them. Once you subscribe to them, they're, they're pushed out to you. Uh, you don't have to download them, it happens sort of automatically, it ends up in your uh, podcast program that you use. Um, so, you know, in that sense, uh, the, 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 the distribution aspect is already taken care of. Again, as an instructor, as a, even as a student, you can create your own podcast. Um, and, you know, just once it's uploaded, it gets distributed automatically. Um, okay, we have... 15 uh, more minutes. Are there any other questions regarding the type of, I mean, I haven't even answered that. Um, you know, we've got video all um, teacher collections. Okay, there we go. Hispanic, shows for kids, TV talks, parenting, comics, bold women. Uh, Pride, language learning, oh, that's just really a good one. And there's already a ton of language learning podcasts. Uh, in one of, uh, there are also podcasts, or there's a podcast for foreign language instructors, uh, which I linked to in one of my uh, newsletters. It's called uh, We Teach Languages. Um, and it's relatively recent. It's yeah, the name of the podcast? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say it again, please? We Teach Languages. 
created. Have I made this? Yeah. No, no, no. This is oh, okay. this is produced by uh, Stacy Margarita. Whoever this person is. There is, I mean, I can talk about it after the after the Okay. What I wanted to do is um if you already went through research, let's see maybe. Okay. Those are uh the platforms that you can use to get access to podcasts. There's Apple Podcasts. If you're an Apple user, you already have Apple Podcasts in your iTunes. Uh, the parallel program for Google is Google Podcasts. There's also Spotify and SoundCloud. And uh, we will take a look at SoundCloud later on, I think in two weeks. It's a platform to freely upload everything and to distribute everything. Uh, but what I wanted to do right now is to use the last 10-15 minutes to take you to our podcasting booth uh, to show you how to record different things. But now that you are um, bringing up the notion of, okay, why should we even, what can we do with this thing? Maybe it would be more worthwhile to take the last 10-15 minutes of the class to discuss now what podcast could be used for, and then go and record next week. I mean, if we no, create we our podcasts, mm -hmm. then we, we can have discuss. ownership of it, of the materials we decided to put in it. Um, the other question is, you know, are there some really worthwhile podcasts that could be just used? Uh, because for they're already great. So, so there are two things. Of course, if we decide to create some, then we can address to actually, you know, every little issue that we mm -hmm. But if there are already some great ones out there, we might also use them. Um, there are a bunch out there um, for, I would say for all languages that represent in this room at least. Um, I am not sure if Indonesian has one, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, to look for them, you log on to iTunes and search for a French language podcast. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of things with videos, I mean, mm -hmm. with a, a visual component. Um, just pure podcasts, I'm not aware of Because I listen to it. Do you have any textbooks, any materials that are already accompanied? Yes, they are. They yeah. already yeah. have yeah. accompanied. Yes. And what do they have Usually they have some there. kind of tables, though. I mean, you know, they usually come with. There's somebody who just tells the lesson and tells about the lesson, mm -hmm. but also shows the verb tables. And so, <coughs> so that's already not a natural way of It's more like a podcast. But they are there for the as well. I don't. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think they, I they label them the podcasts. I, I haven't used it, but uh, so I just. I was in my textbook, I thought that you, you were the author, but you want the one that you're using. So there are online materials, right? mm -hmm. so if there's students who get access to this. Simon, can I help you do something? Mm -hmm. or, uh, I have used SoundCloud to record uh, all the whole stories about To record what? To record audio. Okay. So if I record something there and I, I upload it there, it's, it's the same thing that I can ask uh, my students. To do it. To up, yeah, that so was going to be the that was going to be um, you know, in three weeks. Yeah, because uh, I have done it myself to record something yes. for the students. Mm -hmm. But for what is new for me is to ask the students to upload a module. So right. I'm not asking them. Uh, we can. We will. I'll be looking to do this. Not next Thursday, but thanks. They can listen to it. Uh, it looks like we're already discussing how this, these things are used in, in class. Okay. Yes. Because I don't use it. There are so many things. Yeah, that works. Okay, this is, you said that there were stories.
with the media component. Would it be possible to open up this conversation for all oh. of us? Okay, well, just again, we, I think we, really... we return to the same question. Mm -hmm. so, what do you do with this? Clear, it's clear that podcast is a great technology. Perfect. New, okay. great technology <laughs> makes it easier. Never question that. But this is a new form, a new technology. Mm -hmm. What do my question is? What do you do? What are, what things? What what is the content component mm -hmm. that there is in the field already that is successfully used? Mm -hmm. So Nina said that there is a component. That my question to my colleagues was: mm -hmm. Do you have textbooks that do already have the the podcast component? And Nina said that they do have, and what they have there are short stories. That are told mm -hmm. to students. Short stories that are told to students. Well, that are recorded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Recordings of short stories. And my question was. I guess, like, about, um, well, realistic things about I'm Abdul, I learned Swedish this way. And mm -hmm. it's about 50 minutes long. Mm -hmm. 15. 15. Mm -hmm. And these short stories are monologues in the target language. Um, Actually, I don't know. Uh, but there are exercises to each. Okay. And the exercises are also in the podcast? No, they are separate. Uh -huh. So the short stories would then be focused so on. What, what profession did Abdul have? So okay. it's kind of a listening. Okay, so listening comprehension, essentially. Mm -hmm. And if the students do it, they are working on their. Speaking skills at the moment. If we ask the students to read or to record a story. And then, uh, uh, as we've the seen in the Icelandic the podcast, pronunciation practice. Mm -hmm. In the new French textbook, the testing of the learning, they, they, you know, there are these characters who have blogs, and sometimes they have podcasts, they add a podcast to the blog, so you can always read it on, mm -hmm. in the book and also listen. So there's this fiction that maybe these people are just creating blogs and podcasts. Um, would you agree that part that... But it's uh, very artificial. Would you then agree that uh, mm -hmm. working with podcasts would be part of digital literacy? Yeah. Is this something that our students It's probably uh, one of the ideas. And there also, there's also the grammar podcast that you can listen to. So if you are at the gym exercising, you, know, you can also listen to the grammar podcast. Five mm -hmm. minutes on... Subjective. Mm -hmm. So not just pronunciation or listening comprehension, but grammar points as well, yes, Alan. No, you know. Or, uh, you know, sorry. No, well, from my experience, I, I, I still prefer like a podcast, because especially at elementary level, because they need the images, they need the visual material and the body language and, and the context. So it's much easier for them to grasp and just to have just to bring up this without any pictures, it's kind of boring for them. But I think to if they produce their own, that's different. Uh, How is it different then? What can we do? What can our students do? Well, they they get active. They're so okay. <laughs> that's important. They produce language. They work on pronunciation because they want it to be really good to be out there and public. They work oh. on the content as well because they don't want to be caught in the same thing for a long time. They can practice before we come in. They practice. If it is very short. I think Nina's point has brought us to another very important thing to consider. What level of language uh, podcasts target? So it's the intermediate level, sorry, not the beginning level, is definitely they need visual. But I am thinking about graduate students who are just, well, they are, my, I don't know, my guess is at this point that the higher the level, uh, the less they might need uh, visualization, visual components. So at high levels, uh, audio might be good enough, good enough, or maybe that will be what they need. 
Well, at the elementary level, um, they can study the lesson at home, they practice in class, and when they're at the gym or walking the dog, they can listen to the podcast yes. as a, you know, mm -hmm. just a that, that that was fun. Fun. One thing does not explain. That's the thing, I mean, videos. because, you know, we, we have video and that's great, but there are times when you don't have video and you still want to be listening to mm -hmm. something. So, so you're just listening, what, walking on the street or exercising. When you are running. Knitting or whatever, you know. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all for your feedback. Thank you. Thanks for the message. The gym. When they the gym. Okay. And there's uh, so many people listening to all sorts of things. Yeah. That, that's when they listen to podcasts. Yeah. So the whole notion of just being able to take this with you and, and have it with you on the road or whatever it is that you're doing without necessarily making you yeah. sit mm -hmm. in one place and devote your entire attention to the TV. In this case, mm -hmm. uh, can be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 okay. Um, I was going to um, actually go over all this the last meeting, uh, but now I realize that that was a structural mistake on my part. This should, is something that should have been covered the very first thing today, but. Um, I think this kind of gives us a pretty, pretty okay uh, map or idea of how podcasts could be used or indeed have been used in class. I'm particularly interested in the short stories. Um, I think that this is something that um, is a very uh, you know, sound uh, pedagogical manifestation of. Uh, of the uh, multi-literacy approach. Um, short stories that are not only um, sort of presented, given, consumed by students, but also short stories that students can make um, on their own, right? Um, I also think that um, to sort of summarize all this um, and put it in the context of the more recent ways uh, of thinking about language teaching and language pedagogy is um, to look at it through the prism of digital literacies and indeed multi-literacies. As the popularity of podcasts seems to be increasing, um, and as there are more and more of these things, uh, these broadcasts that come out from different corners of the world, um, it is important to um, make our students familiar with the genre and everything else that this notion of the podcast genre entails. So of course, when it comes to podcasting, sure, we can have, a pod, we can have but there are podcasts that come with, with a textbook, uh, which are sort of prefabricated, kind of a little bit artificial, focused and structured uh, for a specific purpose um, of, that is aligned with, with the textbook and um, with what, you know, with what a particular unit is about. However, um, this is not what podcasts are. Once you know, go online and start looking and browsing through the various kinds um, of, of broadcasts that are available, uh, you will notice that they're actually not um, artificial. They are authentic text. They are authentic language. Um, and that in order to be able to understand, to interact, to consume them, students need to be prepared. Um, this opens up opportunities that um, I think um, have are not necessarily uh, that were, they were absent uh, from you know other medium of um, audio sharing, um, such as uh, different such as cultural variety that comes with podcasts being produced in different portions of the world. This is not necessarily something that is maybe apparent in Swedish, uh, but when it comes to Spanish speaking podcasts, you do have different linguistic varieties, you do have different Indians, you have different vocabularies, you have different traditions of color, same with French, right? Um, this is something that you, that is really easy to access, um, and something you could be used maybe in class, maybe not at the elementary level, but sort of intermediate, advanced, um, as part of the C, the, the culture C, right? Um, of course, it would need to be scaffolded appropriately. Now, when it comes to scaffolding, that is a topic for a you know, complete for, for, for another workshop altogether, and it will largely depend on uh, your own approach to um, curricular development and materials design as an instructor. Um, yeah, I think 
It's kind of everything that I have. We are five minutes over.